have here two great highlights, half cents from the D. Brent Poe Collection Part 3 to be sold in New York City next uh, February 9th. Hope you can attend by in person and be our guest along with Sotheby's or uh, by uh, virtual uh, internet or by telephone. Or just come and be a, an interested observer. You're going to see history being made. The sale will be remembered 100 years from now. These two half cents represent the rarest uh, single date in the half cent series. This one has no pole holding the cap of Miss Liberty. There's a, normally a little, a little pole. Uh, there are only a few dozen known. This is superb MS67, the finest known uh, of just a handful of coins uh, that exist. And this will be one of the great attractions next uh, February. Uh, I expect that uh, it will uh, cause excitement from uh, top to bottom and front to back. And here's its cousin from the same year, the 1796 half cent with the pole from a different die. Uh, the engraver remembered to put the pole on this one. And this is a beautiful mint state coin too. So if half cents are um, your specialty or you're thinking of being your specialty, this is a unique pair in terms of uh, rarity and condition combined. I have here um, a very nice example of a $3 gold piece. Uh, the D. Brent Pogue Collection Part 3 has a complete set of $3 gold pieces from 1854 to 1889, except for the unique 1870S, in the nicest condition that has ever been offered at auction. And I have here an 1854D, which is the only Dahlonega mint uh, coin. It's mint state and uh, one of just a handful that exists. Uh, it's uh, going to be a great highlight when it crosses the block uh, early next year. Back on $3 gold pieces, I have here a, a superb gem 1875, uh, one of the uh, rarest low miniature pieces. They only made uh, 20 pieces in the year 1875 in proof grade and none for circulation. So only 20 were made today, maybe a dozen or so exist. And the Pogue Collection coin is one of the very finest, a glittering gem, just super, super, super. I'm holding in my hand two 1793 cents, the first uh, American cents made for general circulation. In March 1793, the first uh, variety came out. Uh, it shows Miss Liberty on the obverse, uh, and on the back it shows a chain of, of 15 links that represented the uh, 15 states in existence then. Uh, Vermont and Kentucky having joined the original 13 colonies. When this came out, a newspaper article widely uh, reproduced said that Miss Liberty appears to be in a fright, not very pleasant looking, and the, and the chain on the reverse is an ill omen for a country that uh, proclaims liberty and freedom. Uh, so uh, they, they soon changed it, but this has a little story also. The, this is the very first die. The engraver on the back says, says the United States of Amari, A-M-E-R-I. Didn't think the CA would fit or fit nicely. So he made another reverse die right here with America on it and also Miss Liberty in a fright. These were made for only a short uh, period of time. Uh, when these were made in 1793, uh, no one collected coins in the United States that we know of. No one collected federal coins. You would think that, gosh, you know, when the mint opened, that was the first year of business. Uh, collectors would say, I want one of everything, but you know, collecting had not been developed. And anyone who did collect coins or metals collected ancient Roman and Greek coins and didn't pay attention to the mint. So the result was that all these coins, uh, thousands of them, went into circulation, became worn. And when coin collecting did become popular many decades later, uh, anyone trying to find one would find a coin, a, a 1793 chain cent. Uh, that was well worn. The survival of mint state pieces like these two beautiful pieces is a matter of rare chance. We don't know what happened, but maybe someone put them in a drawer as a souvenir and forgot about them for a few generations, but they're beyond marvelous and will be great attractions uh, at the sale. Let's go to this coin. This is a 1793 copper cent of the wreath type, so-called because the reverse has a wreath on it instead of the earlier chain. There were complaints about the chain design, so they changed it to a wreath. This is in very high relief, uh, gem mint state, uh, one of very few pieces existing in this condition today. All the Pogue coins are not only among the finest of their kind, many often the best uh, certified by PCGS, but also they have excellent eye appeal. Uh, they have, uh, they're just nice to look at. They're very memorable, and uh, this coin 
certainly one of the attractions. Here, an 1822 dime, that's what they call the capped bust variety, uh, type uh, designed by John Reich. The first one was minted in 189. This goes, skips ahead to 1822. And the main attraction of this is that the 1822 is a very rare date. There aren't many dimes dated 1822 uh, of this design. There are a lot of them dated 189, a lot dated 1814, but not too many 1822. Not only is this dated 1822, but it's MS66, which is superb gem. So it's, it's a superb gem, uncirculated, nicely preserved uh, 1822. And this particular coin, this is an 1815 $5 gold piece, half eagle. It's a gem uncirculated coin, MS65. There are only <clears throat> about a dozen of these known in the entire world. They didn't make many. And none approaches the quality of this. Uh, believe it or not, the government of uh, the State Museum of Sweden has an 1815 $5 gold piece. How they got it, I don't know, but it's one of their national treasures. But it doesn't compare to this. The Smithsonian Institution has one of these, but it doesn't compare to this.